everyone it is really good to have you here my name is Dumi Pizzani and welcome back to my channel so today's video is the graduate program guide for 2021 to 2022 last year I did a how to get into a graduate program video and it was quite successful and helped a lot of students the reason why I'm doing a second graduate program guide is one I got into a second graduate program so I'm still a graduate and I have a lot of more information to give to you guys and secondly there were a lot of questions that were asked that I didn't really touch on in my last video that I've sort of accumulated over the past year and I feel like is great information to add on as a resource for you guys. Another reason is I've also gotten a lot of DMs on requests for help on interview prep and all of those things and I've tried to reach as many people as I can but sometimes I just miss the date so it's just very overwhelming and I want there to be a resource for each and every one of you to sort of lean on because this has helped a lot of you guys. I've gotten so many success stories in my DMs that just make me so happy and I hope that this helps another person um, in this year. If you see me looking down I'm just looking at my laptop where I wrote down all the pieces of information that I feel are important and obviously last year's resource is also one that you can use which is the how to get into a graduate program and this will just be an add-on to that okay so the most asked for thing is definitely psychometric tests I have linked all the free psychometric tests that I know down below so please just look down below for them and I hope they help you going forward Secondly, I spoke a lot about how having extracurriculars can really boost your chances of, you know, your CV looking better. Um, but I just want to reiterate because I've also gotten a lot of DMs about people that are stressed that they only focused on school, they had other family commitments and they couldn't necessarily take extracurriculars extracurriculars from what I've watched from other videos and spoken to other graduates. Um, it's only like 10% of what they look at in terms of the whole scope of who you are. Remember, they still have to look through your resume. They still have to look through maybe your LinkedIn if they use LinkedIn, you know, maybe have a telephone conversation with you. So there are so many other factors that weigh more. Please don't be stressed if you didn't have any extracurricular activities. But if this video, you know, pushes you to do that, then I'd really, really, really encourage you to get get involved get involved in university or get an or pairing job or getting a job outside of varsity just to show that you know you can juggle a lot of things at the same time okay next i'm going to be going over the three main interview questions in your first interview so usually in interviews there are several rounds uh, but in the first one which will usually be done over a telephone or over a video higher view where you have to record yourself it downloads and it gets sent to the recruiters there are three main questions that they ask you and I'm just gonna go through um, each of them with sort of a practice answer just so that you guys can get more comfortable with that so the first question is definitely who you are you should be able to say who you are confidently and you know you can put your qualifications behind that but just to really you know give a highlight of who you are you can add a little fun thing that you like to do to make it late light-hearted but don't stress about that um, they just want to know a little more about you so this is how I'd answer it Hi, my name is Dimi Pizzani. I studied a BCom Honours in Corporate Finance and Investment from BITS. The reason why I studied this degree is I've always had a love for business and I've always wanted to know what happens behind the scenes and how businesses are financed and I feel like this gives me a really great lens. I'm also the chairperson of the BITS Investment Society where we connect you know, the working world to students and create those connections so that students can learn more about the working world and learn more about work experience before they actually step into the boardroom. In my spare time I love to create content and go to gym and I feel like doing all these things alongside my studies keeps me really dynamic and I love it so much. So that's something I do. I added my qualifications, I added what I do in my extracurriculars and I also added sort of what I do on the side. I, in that I just tried to show sort of how dynamic I am and I, I literally I was just introducing myself. I didn't really speak about anything regarding the business yet but then that's sort of the first question that they ask you they want to know a bit about who you are the yeah, next interview question would definitely be what do you know about the company in this you'd have to sort of do a little bit of research so you'd need to know sort of what the company does you know what the graduate program does and also add in maybe one or two of the pillars that the company has so in each company page there is 
an about section where they speak about their main you know pillars or their main goals and it's very nice to sort of add that into you know what do you know about the company the next question people will definitely ask you is why this company you also should refer to sort of its pillars or goals on the about page about why you want to work for this company I know a lot of us just want to work for a company because we want a salary but just try and find something in their pillars that aligns to your personal goals and touch on that you don't need to speak about all five Five pillars of a company if it's five or six or seven you can really just stick to one or two that really speak to you and are able to make you connect to whatever those pillars are the next thing would definitely be what you would gain from working for this company in this space you can speak about the exposure you get you can speak about how you could turn your academic knowledge from varsity into practical knowledge you know if it's a company that really does make a difference you could speak about how you feel like you'd be making a greater difference into whatever that company does but it's basically trying to find something that you connect to about that company and how you'd like to impact and you know create a difference in that company because that's why they're hiring at the end of the day to make a difference another one they love to pick is why that field you're in so it could be why fintech why investment banking why geology and you basically have to sort of create a connection as to why you want to be there that is a personal answer there's a lot of people on youtube that tell you sort of how to answer the why investment banking answer you can really go with what they're saying but also just make it you know personal to you and try and be as genuine as you can and in a lot of these why investment banking or why tech or why teaching videos on youtube they have a lot of different examples so i would say pick the example that is most personal to you so another important thing I would like you guys to start doing when you're prepping for your interviews is going through case studies in whatever field that's in. I know it's very hard to sort of know how to prep for an interview and I think case studies are great because they sort of give you a practical example on the day-to-day -day of what is done at that company. You can find case studies online so you'll just search like law interview case studies and just practice those. Be comfortable with some of the jargon, some of the things that they ask you to do but I think that it's so important a lot of times are very sort of confused as to how to prep for an interview you know obviously the company website is a great place to do that obviously your varsity knowledge there are some specific things that they need you to know going out of varsity but another way to just switch it up is definitely doing case studies the next thing I would like to stress on whether you are still in your second third fourth year of university or you're prepping to you know get into a graduate program is definitely get comfortable with Excel practice Excel don't necessarily have Excel classes in varsity if you do that is amazing your university is doing great I did an honors and R class but that was more coding with Excel than actual just easy excel like vlookup like pivots like such easy things so i would say that if you have spare time just go find some free excel courses there are lots on youtube and tiktok and just get comfortable with sort of microsoft excel and that will help you so much also get comfortable with powerpoint because as a junior a lot of us use excel and powerpoint all the time another thing i'd really recommend is if you make it past the cv stage of a grad program or an interview process i would definitely suggest that you try and go on linkedin and find someone from your university that also went through the grad program either a year or two years prior and just send them a dm on linkedin and then ask them sort of what they did to maneuver it i say that you need to do it with someone that went to your varsity because it's sort of you already sort of have a connection that you went to the same school you probably studied the same thing or you're probably in the same faculty and then they are more likely to help you because they sort of have like this like you know connection with you um but obviously if you didn't go to a varsity where someone was a grad earlier then that's totally fine you can still dm any grad that has done it in the past one or two years if you try and reach out to someone a bit older than that they're probably not connected to how the grad program works anymore you know they've sort of moved on to the next phases of their lives but it's definitely okay to ask someone who has gone through this process a year or two years prior to you you know some tips but also just do it when you are preparing for the next interview not just sort of haphazardly when you just sent in your CV because juniors have a lot of work on their hands as well so it really they really need to you know be able to maximize in assisting you knowing that you know you're sort of you sort of met them halfway I know that it sounds like really weird but um 
yeah so don't be afraid to just send in like a linkedin dm just be like hey how are you my name is xyz i also studied this and this at uct with you um so i have an interview with you know this for this graduate program role and i see that you did this actually like two years ago i was just asking if you had any tips for me i'm really excited and i really loved this role literally that's all you need to say and hopefully if they do check their linkedin they're able to sort of help you and usually the people are really nice and they are able to help you like i've gotten that from people before and i was more than welcome to help next i'd just like to quickly touch on what recruiters do look for so um, they look for your resume I've spoken about CV a lot in the last video so you can just go back to the last video to just remember what I sort of said about the CV but a lot of things that I've realized from the CV is there are still people that are making a lot of grammatical errors have like two people read your CV to make sure that it's like spick and span because once there's like a typing error there's a reason to throw your CV away out of like so many and I know it's really petty but that's just the name of the game the next thing people look at is definitely networking. It's very important for them to be able to hold a conversation with you. And that's why usually they'll have a telephonic interview where they just want to speak and get to know you. And that is because they want to see how you sort of conversate with people. You know, when you are a junior, when you're in any corporate space, you're working a lot in teams. So you need to be a person that they feel that they can work with and the person that they can sort of bounce things off a lot. So just practice speaking to your friends about anything and just get comfortable having a conversation and I know it's like more pressure because you know you're trying to get a job out of this but always just try and be cool calm and collected in those situations just understand that they're trying to know you and they're trying to get to know a bit about you and it's not as serious as the main interview yet so definitely work on your networking skills just to add this will usually be conversations that are not about work your hobbies and your interests and what you like to watch on tv so just be very comfortable with speaking about those things and also be comfortable with speaking about yourself you can also ask them a question about themselves but it's really just to know that you can carry a conversation with someone the next is interview so i went through a couple of the interview things they ask prior but interviews are mainly split into two things where one you speak about yourself and then the next you speak about more technical things so you need to be ready to switch over to speaking about yourself and then quickly going into technicals when they ask you technical questions usually technical questions go from easy to hard so then just you know breathe in breathe out and you've got this it takes a lot of prep a lot of the times the hr people do give you a lot of material to prep on and tell you what you need to expect what is meant to be is meant to be but you will be prepared the next question i get a lot is what you can do to prepare yourself for interviews in the working world even if you're not there yet so maybe you're you know a second year student or maybe you're still waiting for applications to open or anything like that so first thing i'd say is definitely read some business information whether it's the financial times or business live and this is not just for a finance field it's just to know what's going on in the world even if it's just the news like the sunday times or the times or city press it's very important to know a lot about the news and it's very important to know what's happening because obviously everything is connected so I would definitely say be up to date with, with what's happening in current events and in the news obviously if you work in finance you'll focus on business day if you work in politics you'll focus on what's going on that side so you'll zoom into the things that matter a lot to you but it's definitely important to read the news all the time another one would definitely be follow the companies that you want to work at on LinkedIn a lot of these companies take Take out a lot of interesting articles that can help you build your knowledge and get you comfortable with sort of what they do and what the industry does the third one that i started doing much later is definitely applying to conferences for free online that speak about the field that you work in so even if it's like a free for me now it's like a free property conference even though my job doesn't require me to do it i will just log on or listen to a think piece on it or anything like that recently i went to a competitor's youtube channel and i just watched the video of what they were speaking about in terms of commercial property finance so i'm still sort of building that base even though i do have a job so i think it's very important you know watching youtube videos about that field or you know listening in on conferences i definitely recommend that last one i touched on on my last video but i just like to make it a bit of a reminder because i know a lot of people are stressed COVID has shrunk the job market and it's just 
an anxiety inducing place right now to be at as a fresh new graduate or someone that's approaching that finish line i would like to speak about what you can do right now while having to tackle a stagnant economy i would definitely say that there are some career paths that do have opportunity more than others so i would love to challenge you to do research on those places and then try and pick up a course on udemy or google that helps you get a certificate or create a skill to understand it it is very easy to sort of bridge from what you study to what you can do i know people that studied a ba that now did data analytics because they did a data analytics course so you can do courses online through google Google, through Udemy, through universities. U UCT has some amazing online courses just so that you can break into a new career path if the one that you are trying to get into is closed off and saturated. There are a lot of hiring freezes and we really don't know what's going to happen. You know, our vaccination rollout is really slow. You know, what's happening sort of in South Africa right now, it's sort of shunning us from investors because, you know, it's crazy. So I definitely say, look at other avenues and digital certificates are the way of the future, especially making sure that they are certified. Then that can sort of help you bridge the gap to a different career path that can either be a new long-term career or it can just be something that can buffer while you're still waiting for things to settle down in the country. Another thing I saw on LinkedIn recently are online internships. So there are actually internships that you can do online for the work experience to put on your resumes. And I think that's great. That's a great thing that came out of COVID that you can literally do an in internship sitting at your desk. And there weren't a lot of internships in South Africa. So now being able to do an internship at a company in the US or Ireland, I think that is crazy. Please research that if you're looking for some work experience, please research that, you know, if you're trying to broaden your horizons and the last two i spoke about in the last video as well is master's programs that gives free scholarships i spoke about the embassy of ireland giving free scholarships i spoke about you know there being websites that give free scholarships i'll link some down below i looked some up when i was doing my research so i'll just put them down below and other one is definitely getting an international recruiter that can help you sort of you know use the skill that you learned from varsity overseas because I'm sure that there are some companies out there that could really use what you learned in varsity. So that is my graduate program guide for 2021 to 2022. I hope it was able to help. If you guys have any more questions, comment down below. If I feel like there's a significant amount of questions, I might make a follow-up to this. This is going to be my penultimate graduate program guide. I think the last one I'm going to do is next year once I've really completed my graduate program because at that point I'll be in fully-fledged analyst level. I hope that you took some nuggets of information here that can help you in this you know challenging and crazy you know job search environment and i hope that you know you guys get some great offers from this please 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 tell me if you, this helped you and you were able to get an offer I've, I've gotten so many of those dms and they really lighten my day like i'll be having a horrible mood and i'll just see someone send me a dm saying thank you so much for your video you helped me get a job and i love them so much Lastly, thank you so much for your continuous support. It means so much to me. This video and these types of videos really sparked my YouTube journey. And I love you so much. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.